So here we have two GRP wheels. This one has been scrubbed and cleaned. And this one has not. Not that the tread patterns matter, but you want to get all the grime out from the lettering, especially right up against it. Like you can't see with this one because it hasn't been cleaned yet. Back here on this one, this back side has been cleaned, but you can see how there's still some white residual substance in between the lettering. It's like this powder that comes on these tires when they're new. You can see it here too. Versus on this side. See, it's a lot cleaner. It doesn't have that in there. This is going to let the, uh, the lettering stand out more. So here's another set of GRP wheels. These are S4 compound. These yellow ones are S5. This is the uh, Revo tread pattern. This is the new style Revo tread pattern. Now, let's take this one for example. This is the one I spent the most time on. You can see how nice and crispy and sharp these letters stand out. They have great contrast when you scrub it really good. The only problem you're gonna have is the softer the compound, the easier they mar up. Like, see it's perfectly clean, right? This is because I've been holding it and stuff like that. Look how soft it is. See that? There's even nail prints here from days ago that they're still on here. But look, see that? Even just wiping it down with the towel is gonna do that. So after scrubbing these, I use a toothbrush with you know soap and water and I get in there and I'll even use like a microfiber, a wet microfiber with soap and I'll get in there and rub it. But when you go to dry it, you gotta wipe it softly when you dry it. If you try to rub it aggressively when you go to dry it, you're gonna start all over again. It's gonna make, it's gonna mar everything up. All these marks are gonna be in between these letterings. It's gonna look like that and you're gonna start all over again. So the harder compounds are easier to work with. This is a S5. Even this one mars up, right? But having an S4, that's even more sensitive. Look at that. It's even more sensitive. But long story short, you get it all cleaned up, you get it nice and dry, and I'll even clean it with some alcohol. I'll get the same toothbrush with a little drop of alcohol just to be sure that I'm gonna get good adhesion when I go to apply the paint. So these are the markers that I'm using. Link in the comment section below and in the description up above. These I did not purchase with the intent to use it on rubber. I purchased these after doing research on the quality of these in a art application, you know, like canvas work. So I like to use this for detail when I do a uh, canvas art. So they're water-based, they're acrylic. What I was looking for were enamel ones, you know. Um, well, yeah, I know they make oil-based ones, but I didn't want oil because the art that I do is with acrylic paint. And I don't want to mix oil with acrylic. So I ended up getting these that are acrylic. Acrylic is water-based and they are not as durable as oil but this like i said this was just for like art canvas so i didn't need it to be durable however if you want to do your own research and you want to find something that is more suitable for rubber possibly something that's oil based that's going to adhere and last a lot longer you know be my guest go ahead all i'm going to show you is the a technique now even if you find yourself some oil-based ones, they might have the same tip, and I'll show you what that looks like. This is the tip right here. Let's see if I can get you a zoomed in here. And this is the push dial. You push it down, the tip sinks into it, and it absorbs, you know, more paint, and it gets saturated. When you buy these brand new, these tips are going to be dry. They have no paint on it. You're gonna have to shake it really good and you're gonna have to you know pump it a couple times and shake it and you'll see it start to saturate 
Now to do this, you don't want it too saturated because you don't want it running and going everywhere. You just want it to where, uh, you just want it to where, you know, you have paint. It's shaking up. You want to make sure that you shake it good. You see that it's not mixed. Just shake it really good before you come to use it. And it's basically just like a dabbing technique. And I'll show you what that looks like right now. So this is how I'm going to prep it right before getting to paint. I'm just going to put a little alcohol on this brush and just scrub it off. Just to make sure there's no lint, no dust particles. Pressure because it's just going to scuff up the rubber all over it. So we're ready to go. I got to warm up, so let me do the larger size letters. I'll do the uh, Revo TO3, which is on both sides. I'll do that in yellow, then I'll probably do the GRP tires in white. So I'm doing the back side just so I can warm up. And when I go to do the fronts, I'll just uh, I'll put you guys on time lapse. Let's go. You don't want to overdo it, but you do want to go all the way up to the very edge. You're gonna give this two coats. After the first application dries, the yellow is gonna be a little, you know, transparent, so it's gonna look a little dark. When you do it that second time, it's really gonna pop. Now I haven't tested the durability of this acrylic paint. Do I have my light on here? There we go. I haven't tested the durability of this paint on rubber yet any further than, you know, rubbing it off with my nail and it's pretty good, it sticks. And then I tried scraping off the white lettering on the hoons and it came off just as easy as this. The only thing is with the hoons, they have tall walls. So they're not gonna make contact with the pavement So I feel that this is drying out a little bit. I'm just gonna push down once. Right, so what I'll do, where's my blade? I'll just like push down one time, just once. Let's see a little piece of hair in there. Now you don't want to mess this up and get it anywhere else besides the lettering because when it dries, it's pretty hard to clean. So you might be better off if you have an accident, you're better off correcting it right away while it's wet. Because after this paint dries, because this compound is soft, the rubber, the markings that you're going to make on the rubber because it's so soft is going to look even uglier than the little speck of paint. And I figured if I let it dry all the way, I could just rub it off. I was wrong. Once this dries, it sticks pretty good. And I think it's because this rubber compound is pretty soft. So this paint is able to latch onto it because... It, um. It's not that solid. So you see in some areas, see how there's that speck of yellow next to the R and there's uh, next to the O on the inside. 
that's because of lint. You see that little hair on the tip? That's what caused it. Those two little hair fibers, that's what did that. That's why it's important to make sure that you don't have any lint from whatever cloth you use to dry this up or wash it. And you don't want that on here either. Cause look, those little hairs, that's gonna do that. So I think the best way to get this off is with my finger. Cause I don't want to use anything that's just gonna add more hair to it. Just gonna take this off and make sure there's no funny business on here. And then I'll just wash my hands. You can also use a super fine Sharpie marker. You can also use that if you need to make touch ups, if you got some markings or paint on the rubber in an intricate spot that you really can't get in there, just let it dry all the way so you don't want to damage this tip. Let the paint dry and just touch it up with the black marker. This is a tool that I made. This is the same tip that I used when I soldered the uh, atomic capacitor pack. I don't want to get this on my rim. That used to be a tip, but I have this tip here and I can just use this to get the paint out of the way and wipe it off. see the markings just from touching the rubber because it's so soft you're almost better off leaving it alone and touching it up with, with uh, the black marker put a little bit of saliva on that because I'm not gonna get up to go to the kitchen though. and on the inside of this I don't even know if I want to bother with it I just touched that up yeah so let me do this other end here I'll do this Revo TO3 let that dry up and we'll move on to one of the rims and do the front after I'm warmed up. And I'm not pushing, I'm just touching. No pressure at all. It's the last thing I want to do. And you're not trying to get full coverage on the first application. You just want to be, be sure, beep, 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 beep. Just want to be sure that you didn't miss any spots. Stuff is watery, but it flows good. If this paint was too thick, it wouldn't flow. And then I'd be obligated to kind of like draw on the surface like you would write on paper and try to guide the paint and smear it but all that's going to do is dry the tip because rubber doesn't absorb paint like paper does so it's not going to be pulling paint through the tip it's just going to smudge it onto the tip and the paint's going to dry on the surface of the tip and it's going to clog it and paint's not going to flow it's gonna damage the tip so if you find something that is oil based and it works for you really well share that in the comments for everybody else Just be sure 
that you take the paint to the very edge. Now let me show you something. You see how it's not so perfect? That's okay. When you go to do the second round, you can get all that. If you keep trying to do it now, it's there's going to be so much paint on there that it's going to it's going to run off. It's going to run off to the edge and if it does that, you may as well just take it to the sink and wash it off and start over. So just let that dry and it's going to get a little bit dark because you know it's yellow it's transparent you go over it one more time and the paint's going to hold up really nice let's do this last section here and then we'll go into time lapse <sighs> let's see Getting the paint to go to the very edge can be tricky. Because the paint does want to stay together. This paint is going to try to maintain a bubble, you know. It's got pretty good viscosity considering the flow. So it seems like it's drying out. Just come here and just push down one time just to encourage some flow. I went off the edge a little bit there. All right, not bad. Second time around, that'll really clean up. This close up, it looks horrible compared to the way it looks in person. In person, it looks flawless. But zoomed in this much, it looks horrible. But trust me, it's very crispy looking. This to me looks perfect. Now, even zoomed in, this looks great. This is after the, the second application. So you can see how in some instances the paint actually rolls over the lettering and sometimes it stops at the very edge. You see that? How the T it stopped at the very edge but on the zero and on the three kind of like rolled around it a little bit. I guess it's able to do that after it's already got one coat. And you can see on the R there's like a touch up right here. Excuse my dirty nails. If I if I cut my nails, I can't I can't work. I use my nails for this hobby. And the white is not as thick as the yellow, and the white is a little bit harder to work with. You can see this E. I had a really hard time, partially because of the glue, and I tried cleaning it. I even grabbed a, a needle and I tried scraping the paint with the needle from the lower portion of the E, but all it did was 
scuff up the rubber and it looked white anyway so i was like ugh i tried to touch it up with the uh, sharpie but it didn't fit in there that was that lettering is really small that e but it's going to be worth it in the end so that's two applications and this is one application but this is still drying this is still drying once this dries it's going to darken up so the rest of these I'm going to do on time lapse.
think there's too much paint on the tip. You really can't tell, but. It's the glue that's in the way. Yeah. I'll touch that up with a marker later. That's the glue. You just can't see it because I scrubbed and cleaned this tire really good. And the glue is completely transparent and it's also matte like the tire itself so the glue just looks like it's part of the rubber small price to pay to have a mounted tire that is reliable above 100 miles an hour So this is one coat. I'll let it dry and give it a second coat. Put that in front of the fan or not. Stop another one. You know what? Let's give this yellow a break for a second. <clears throat> when I tap these, I don't do it with the tip down because all the paint flows and it saturates the tip. I hit the back of it. Hit it from the back. Don't do it too hard. You don't want to make things too wet. You just got to hit it from the back for a decent amount of time you'll you'll know you can kind of like get a feel for it let's do the grp tires lettering in white that section right here well, my light was off around what's going on here don't want to block your view. These letters aren't as raised as the TO3 Revo letters. So it feels a little bit more challenging to get it to come out clean. But I'm also using white. So this white paint might not be as thick as the yellow or solid. I mean, I'm pretty sure all these paints are pretty much identical if you're using them on paper or canvas or you're, you know, but when you're doing 
really small detail work like this that's so intricate and sensitive is when you might notice any differences because not all color pigments behave the same And I'm trying to go out tonight and run these compounds These are the S4s. My yellow ones are the S5s. It's nighttime, so I'll give the 4s a shot. Plus, I'm going to a much smoother road. But I'm running 6S for a couple reasons. Reason number one is this is the first time I am trying out the atomic capacitor pack that I just installed last night. And there's no need to go full out on 8S. I wanna get data logs for 6S and then 8 so I can compare them to the previous runs on 6S and 8 that I did without the capacitor packs. And also for some reason, my lights, be it my headlights and my tail lights, don't turn on when I'm running the 4S packs. The only turn on when I'm running my 3S packs and it's nighttime, so I really like this. I really do think it's worth it. I don't care if they get rubbed off during driving it. They're great for making uh, video thumbnails and it's a good way to just concentrate and focus on something else to just get away from stress. You know, this is this makes a good distraction. And I can still touch them up. They get scuffed up or whatever, I don't care, man. So I tried painting this in white. Not that it matters, you know, that would be this lettering portion here. Try doing it in white, but they're so small, I can't hold that much paint and I can try going over it one more time to get it to stand out, but it's not its not artistically pleasing like, you know, this lettering is. So I really like it. I hope it looks this good on the other ones. So we'll let that dry. Let me grab another rim. So this rim, I have not taken the time to clean up the glue like I've done with uh, the other ones that I've cleaned up. Just doing it with a razor blade. But as long as it's not like all up in the lettering, I can get around it. But gotta be careful because I don't wanna cut, ruin my tire with a razor blade. Just for the aesthetics. That would not be worth it. 
But I'll tell you what, this glue is serious. This glue doesn't play around. This isn't something that I'm always going to do. But I at least want to do it once. Ever since I started taking this channel seriously, it's been more of work, 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 and less fun. So this is just alcohol. This is just rubbing alcohol in an old toothbrush. Even with the toothbrush being dry or just a little water, it still does a really good job of cleaning in between the lettering. You can also just with the palm of your hand, just do this and it kind of like polishes the rubber a little bit. Just from the oils from your hands. Like it does it, you can see how it's done it to the rest of it, you know, from just apprehending it so often. But if you don't clean it really good, with soap and water, when you first get them, you're not going to do anything. You have to clean these with soap and water, and because the, the tires are vented, they don't vent the rim, they vent the, the rubber tire. I don't want to get water in there. So when I'm cleaning this with soap and water, I'm doing it frugally. I'm not just like dunking it in or whatever. Other rims, like my grippers, I can just put a piece of tape on the rim and just go to town on it, you know? All right, I'm gonna just make sure I don't have any little hairs or lints on here. Let's get things going with this. All right, things are looking good. Let's go. Make sure there's no lint or little hairs on this. See that hair? That is what is going to screw you up. Let's make sure. All right. Yep, there it is. You see that? I need a pair of tweezers for that.
Okay, this tip seems like it's drying up. It's time to give it a press. Try to do this on a razor blade because it's not paper, so it can't pick up lint. And it's a hard flat surface, and it's gonna let me keep this tip flat. So I can get a nice flat contact. Now the tip is a little bit wetter. Let this paint flow out. Let it get wet all the way to the edge. The wetter, the better. Just don't want it to be soaking wet. Because then you're going to have this paint rolling past the edge of the letter. There's a little piece of hair on this. If you can see that. See that? Look at that hair. I will touch that up. Those little imperfections happen from that one little hair, man, that was on there. That's how it is. I'm going to let that fully dry. Let's get on this one now. Why is this happening? Why am I getting hairs? I think this is because I have the fan. I have the fan blowing directly on me. And I think that it's the paint that's slightly drying. And it gets a little stringy. I think that's what that was. I just took the fan off of me. I don't like that I'm doing that over. I can handle one blooper, but I'm not gonna start letting this job go to crap. All right, that's gonna need a rag. So this is the first time I screw something up and I got to wipe it off. So let's see how that works. Actually, I'm lying. This is not the first time, but it is the first time that I have to do it like this. Last time, 
I just let it completely dry and I just tried like peeling off the imperfection like with a little needle or a paper clip and it didn't work the paint sticks it sticks better than that Great, I rubbed the toothbrush on my pants and then I put all the lint on here. Don't do that. I think the best way to clean it is just with a dry toothbrush. This alcohol dries fast anyway. Okay. Let's get on it. Uh, look at all this paint that came on here. All right, so I'm almost done with the second wheel. I'm gonna do this white portion on it. I'm gonna call it a video because my lipos are almost done charging and it's pretty much self-explanatory doing two rims it's the same thing as doing four so let's get to it Sometimes it's hard to tell if these letters need more paint or not. Like it's hard to tell if you took it too far to the edge or if you need to take it further to the edge. Because it doesn't look, the edges don't look sharp and crispy. So does it not look sharp and crispy because the paint hasn't made it to the very edge? Or does it not look sharp and crispy because the paint flowed beyond the edge? And the only way to tell is to acknowledge the size of the lettering. Like, can it be bigger? This is the hard one right here. These little letters, I already screwed up the R. I can't talk and do this. Oh God. Duh. I'm touching that up. That's getting a touch up.
How are these letters holding up? Look at them. I haven't even been touched yet. That's good. Look at that. I haven't even been touched. I know that eventually, you know, as the tires wear down and that uh, sidewall becomes thin, I know it's gonna catch up to them eventually, but at least, you know, you get to enjoy them. It's not like they're gonna get damaged right away. That's good, you're gonna get good use out of it. Hey guys, thank you so much for stopping by to check out my channel and I really do hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to check out the product link description for the markers in the comment section below. Thanks.